Now, it's my pleasure to welcome the one, the only, Megan Porritt of YourContractShop.com. Welcome to the Phoenix Network, Megan. Well, thank you, Gene. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's my pleasure. We'll get to your contract shop in a minute. But first, tell us about <laughs> The least exciting part of the story, but I am happily and proudly a second generation Arizonan, a third generation entrepreneur. I'm also a uh, second career attorney, which is really fun because I had an opportunity to um, start and run a couple of businesses, some software businesses. I was a lobbyist with the Department of Veterans Services at one point. I ran a couple of political campaigns. Immediately learned that that is absolutely nothing I want to ever do in my life. And then decided to go to law school later. That's great. So, 20 years or more in, there are a lot of virtual businesses these days. Well, can you to build a virtual law firm? Right. Well, it's definitely not something you're seeing uh, yet, but you will. I truly believe that. I think that the legal profession is overdue for um, some innovation. And essentially what happened is when I first started practicing law, I started out as a litigator because I don't know if you knew this about me, Jean. I really like to hear my own voice. But the thing that I didn't like... <laughs> <laughs> We're a good pair that way. But the, the thing that I didn't like about it is I didn't like watching my clients' lives fall apart in front of me. So I looked at the entire legal business model and I said, this has to be able to be done better, more accessible, more affordable for our clients. So what I did is I looked at the entire legal business model and I eliminated everything that wasn't client driven, including an office. When we were looking at how often our clients were actually coming into our, often, our office to see us, it constituted about 5% of what our overhead would have been for rent. So we decided that our clients truly don't need that in this dot-com, you know, post-dot-com era. And we also um, do flat rate billing, which allows our clients to fully budget for our services. We post them all on our website, and therefore we're much more accessible and much more affordable than a traditional law firm. And furthermore, you know who else likes it? Are the attorneys, Jean. The attorneys are happy because they get to do all their work from the beaches of Cabo. There you go. <laughs> That's my goal. Hey, you're going to work from somewhere. You might as well work from Cabo. Right? <laughs> Exactly. Be virtual. Go to work for Megan. <laughs> that's that's what I'm I'm doing. I'm recruiting. So I know that you are very adamant that traditional legal business model is skewed to hurt both attorneys and clients. Tell us about that. Yes, I, I think that the uh, billable hour is is kind of a little quiet demon that nobody talks about. I think in litigation, if you are a litigator and you have to go to court with a client, it's it, it's kind of imperative that you do a billable hour. But pursuant to our regulations, you have to actually track the number of minutes in six minute increments. That is really oppressive for the attorney, but it's also, it, the, the client feels like they're being nickeled and dimed constantly. So they really end up resenting their attorney. They end up not wanting to call their attorney. I mean, Gene, do you feel like you can pick up the phone, other than me, of course, do you feel like you can pick up the phone and call an attorney and not get billed if you if you talk to them under five minutes? Well, call an attorney. <laughs> Well, that's the whole point. You do not feel comfortable calling them. Therefore, what it does is it creates a crisis-only phone call. I want my clients to feel comfortable enough to call me when they have a simple question and not get worried about being nickel and dime. Well, actually, that brings up a great point because the whole the whole calling a crisis thing. Tell us what in a business's life cycle. What do you think? When do you think an attorney's advice is most helpful? Throughout the entire cycle. You're already here. I mean, really, quite literally. But, but really, I think we have a tremendous amount of value early on. And I know that that seems counterintuitive since it seems like, well, at this point, I'm not going to be able to afford an attorney. But we have a number of clients who come to us early, and I'm able to head off an, a, a, a lot of issues. I have had clients who have come to me, Jean, and they've said, I have this great idea, and this is how I'd like to move forward with it. I've already hired somebody to help me start developing it. And I say, let's go ahead and do a patent search. Let's go ahead and do a trademark search. Let's go ahead and see if it's already in existence. And there have been times when my client has, a, has to completely stop what they're doing because they haven't done the research that's necessary to make sure that it's already out there. They also haven't realized, and this is what I call an accidental entity, the moment you start a business, you are putting yourself in harm's way. 
if you don't do it properly and enlist the help of an attorney, then you might be exposing not only the business assets, but your personal assets. So I wanna be like a dentist. No, 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 I'm sorry, I don't wanna be like a dentist. I want you to come see me early and often like dentists say you should, so we can avoid that big legal cavity. And you know, a lot of people actually think of the not that good Then dentists, well you know we have because the highest- it's a lot like pulling teeth. It is, and we have the highest substance abuse and uh, suicide rates of all the professions. The two of us. I'm, <laughs> I'm just not- Not me of course. Yeah. I, mean, I can see a whole river of crocodile tears out there. <laughs> I know, everybody has a lot of <laughs> compassion, don't they? So, what is it that, or if there's anything, what is it that your contract is So what we would like to offer is a free legal checkup on their business. Um, what we find is that there are a lot of businesses who don't know what they don't know. They don't know that they need to have an operating agreement even if they're the only person who owns a business. They don't know that they should have a signed lease with their commercial landlord. They don't know that they actually need to possibly trademark their business in order to protect their name and their logo. So what we're willing to do at our firm is to have the client come in, well, it's virtual, so call us, and we will go through and we will look at all of the various ways that their, their business could possibly be open to, to liability, and we provide them with a report saying, these are the things that we suggest, and they are, these are the possible prices so that they can properly budget. So they don't go out and buy something that they don't absolutely need when they have this liability sitting out and waiting for them. And yet they get exactly what they need. Right, exactly. Right. They get those legal services, they get that legal advice. Kind of like Nancy Lott. We went off the lot behind me. And it turned out he needed it. Yeah, I mean, you're getting burned by a dragon if you're walking out around there and you don't have everything properly tightened up legally. I really see it that way. Just remind us just what it is that your contract shop has available for people today. We are offering a free legal checkup for all of the businesses out there who are listening. And basically what that entails is just us looking at your business, just like a doctor would. We're going to look at the business, we're going to make sure that you are uh, as insulated from liability as possible, and we'll give you a free report that lays out all the things that you should do along with the pricing so that you can budget for it appropriately. That's actually pretty cool. Thanks! Yeah. You're cheering in it, <laughs> I actually get that question all the time. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not surprised. Yeah. Because, you know, I, I actually have gotten it from people before, and of course I always have to do it. <laughs> I know. Well, when, when somebody says, you don't seem like an attorney, I go, well, I guess, thank you then. Well, you have a personality, for one thing. <laughs> I do have a lot of colleagues that have personalities, though. Yes, but they're also virtual. They are. They're working with me. <laughs> See, that's what I'm talking about. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Okay. So, bottom line is, you'll give them a free checkup. Right. Wherever they're at at the moment. Yes, yes, exactly. And, and, and this is for, obviously, uh, Arizona clients. We are only licensed in Arizona, of course, I need to say that. But yeah, wherever they are, if, they're, if it's early on, I can give them a roadmap for where they need to go. And if they're in the middle of their business, even if they're at an exit strategy, I can talk to them about what they need to, to move forward with. That's great. Go, it's been a pleasure having you. Thank you uh, so much, Gene. So, uh, we understand each other, which is... Uh, <laughs> Just for, for you or for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I imagine it's terrifying for you. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing for you. Yeah.